everybody, how's it going? Today I'm gonna fuse some silver wire together and I'm gonna go over why you should be doing it too. Have you ever thought about silversmithing? That takes up a lot of space. I mean, you need a shop for that. I don't have a basement. I don't have a garage. So all I have is my little craft room and I don't have room to metal smith. So I have my stove here. This is all I have. Uh, I discovered wire fusing and it's a lot of fun. So I figured I'd show you how I do it. Hopefully I don't mess up. Honestly, that's why I wire wrap because wire wrapping doesn't take a lot of tools and it doesn't take up a lot of space. So this is just like a little extension of wire wrapping where it's kind of like soldering, but not really. You can only do it with silver wire. Fine silver has a lower melting point, so it's a lot easier to fuse than sterling. Silver fusing, you just need a torch, a little fire brick, a little water quenching. I have some tweezers that are only used for torching, so I don't use it for anything else. If you use pliers, make sure they are used strictly for torching. What's fun about fusing is that it doesn't create that fire scale where you need the pickle afterwards. There's not a lot of cleaning of the metal afterwards and it polishes up really nice. So I'm excited to show you. It's easy to mess up, so hopefully that doesn't happen. So let's get started and I'll make a couple rings. Okay, so I turn the camera around. I'm gonna work over the stove here. When you make your rings, the two ends must be flush. There shouldn't be any gaps at all in between the two ends. I'll show you what I mean. So for this, you're gonna need a good pair of flush cutters, which I have here. Also, I have a metal file, so I can file down the ends and make them as flush as possible. I grab some 12 gauge fine silver wire, like I said. The mandrel I'm gonna use is just a hammer. To make my rings nice and round, I'm going to hammer it with a rawhide mallet. So here I've gone a couple times around. I've got a rawhide mallet here, and I'm just gonna tap my wire so they're perfectly round. I'm gonna cut it straight across from this end. So right about there. So I've got two rings and I cut them flush. So I cut that kind of at an angle. So that's not gonna work when we butt up the two ends here. That one's straighter. This one's at an angle still. Let me cut a little bit off. It's going to have to be filed. Let me do the other one really quick. This one's pretty good. and flat. So I'm going to start pushing these together. First I'm going to like make the ring smaller than it is and then bring them together and kind of push and pull. See there's a gap there? That's no good. So I'm going to pull them apart and I need to file the top edges of them so they lay flush because you don't want to see daylight at all in between them. I'm gonna concentrate on the top edge of the, the ring. Okay, so I kind of push it a little smaller and then I bring them together. Now I need to work on the middle because they're touching in the middle but not on the ends. Pull them back apart. Kind of do some long strokes with my file here. Same with the other side. Let's check it again. much better. I'm going to um, file it again because I see a, just a slight bit of daylight. Turn around, do the other side. You 
make sure they're straight side to side, up and down. See, that's no good either. So we got to make sure they line up perfectly from all angles. to work on that side yeah so make sure to check it from all angles That's looking pretty good to me. Oh, there's a little bit there. Maybe I'll, if I push it down. We'll see how that goes. Watch, watch it won't work. I'm just gonna put that on the fire brick. Fire bricks are nice to have because they retain heat so you can heat the ring evenly throughout so you have a nice even fuse. I'm gonna do the same thing to this ring. I'll probably just speed up the video here. Sometimes I have to put them back on my mandrel or whatever you're using to uh, straighten them out again. Okay, here's one of my rings ready to be fused. I put my joint facing upward. I always try to face them the same way each time. So uh, when things get going here, I know where the joint is when it starts fusing. So what you look for is the ring is gonna start glowing orange and then it'll look like it's starting to liquefy. And then when that happens, then you focus on your joint for a few seconds and uh, you'll notice it fusing and then you'll take the heat off and then put your ring into the quench. I'm gonna turn the lights off so we can see that glow a lot better. Let me get my torch going, put my safety glasses on, see what we can do. So you focus your uh, heat at the end of that bright blue cone. Right past the end of it is where you need to heat your ring at. I was being ambitious using a, a larger gauge wire so it might take a little bit for this to heat up. It's starting to turn orange. I haven't seen it look liquidy yet.
Okay, starting to liquefy a little bit. Start some misshapen before it fuses. Okay, let's move on to the next ring. That's the problem with the larger gauge wire and the larger rings. You need to make sure your heat is evenly distributed so you have a nice even fuse. So if it gets too hot in one spot, it might start melting before it fuses and then you get something like, like that, a little imperfection. That's not too bad. I end up hammering my rings in the end anyway, so we'll see how I can shape that back up. But see how it doesn't turn black? It stays nice and silver. That's what's really cool. All right, let's try this ring. That's fused. I'm not totally convinced though. Put that in there. They both seem like they're fused. Get this back on my mandrel. So here's what can happen. It's thinner here and it's thicker over here. That's because I used thick wire and I made such a big ring. Using smaller gauge wire and making smaller rings will be much easier. These rings I'm going to end up hammering flat and then putting hammer marks in them. It should take care of the imperfections that happen with fusing. Okay guys, so I went back and I hammered my rings out. I kept one a circle and I just wanted to show you that you can make any shape with these that you want. I made a teardrop shape, obviously. So on this one, kind of see where it was fused. It's a little fatter here and a little thinner there, but you know what? That's what makes these look handmade, these little imperfections. So I just go with it. Same with here. The fused part is right here and it's a little thicker up here, but that's what makes jewelry unique, handmade jewelry. Um, I didn't polish these yet. I just wanted to hammer them out real quick, give them some texture, show you what they look like. And that's what we came up with. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? Did you guys have fun? I hope you did. Let me know in the comment section if you're gonna give this a try. And if anybody who knows better than I do, if you have any pointers for me, that'd be greatly appreciated. Also, let me know in the comments if there's any future tutorials you would like to see. I'm going to make a tutorial on necklaces I make with the fused wire rings, and I'm also gonna make a Mobius pendant. So make sure to subscribe, hit the bell button to be notified for when I make those videos. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next week.